Hello guys, um, this is you from Atlas.、Um, we are going to be talking about Junpei today.、Um, we have here. I'm James Shea.、Uh, I play Junpei, or baseball, depending how you want to look at it. <laughs>、uh, here is our guest. And、um, he will be discussing you know, various stuff about this new character、uh, who got introduced in Persona 4 Arena, Ultimax. He's the man. He's the man? Yeah. Alright, so, well, show us you know, how he is the man. Alright. So, a lot of people will probably know that the, when you pick the character, the thing that stands out the most is at the bottom, right next to the meter gauge, is a baseball gauge. Uh huh. And this, is, this gauge really sets him apart from all the other characters in the game. Uh, when you, as you increase the baseball gauge, the little number in the center that、uh-huh. runs, you,、uh, you get access to his like, special power ups, and he gets more and more effective as a character. So, how, do you, how does the baseball gauge work? So, there's S, B, and O,、mm-hmm. and these correspond to strike, ball, and out.、Okay? So, whenever you swing your bat, and it's a bat type attack, if you don't hit anything, one of the S's will fill up, it's a strike, because you hit nothing.、Okay? Mm-hmm. If you get three strikes by missing it three times, you、yeah. get an out. Okay? If you also get hit by the opponent by any, at any time,、uh-huh. so、you also get one, one out. out. You get、I、one、see. out for every individual hit you get.、Um. On the flip side, if you hit your opponent with a baseball bat attack, you get, one, you get a person on base. I see. So you're on the first base now. Right.、Okay. However, if you strike out or you get three outs in a row,、mm-hmm. go ahead and hit me. You, it cleans up the bases again with your three outs. Gotcha. So the idea is you want to use that to fill up the gauge as much as you can. I see.、And、Now,、mm-hmm. how, how do you get the ball then? The ball is a little bit different. If they block any bad attack, that's one ball. Oh.、Uh-huh. So go ahead and block. I see.、Uh-huh. Once you get four balls, just like in baseball, you get one extra run as well. Gotcha. Of course, just like in baseball, if you have, you can get a full count. Go ahead and block. Mm hmm. So at this point, if I, no matter what happens,、mm-hmm. if I swing the bat again or I get hit, it's an out.、Mm-hmm. So go ahead and give me two outs. Okay. Yeah, one more.、Mm-hmm. And then go ahead and block. Okay. This actually gives him a special aura. <laughs> <This means he's, laughs> That's cool. It means he has a full count.、Uh-huh. I'm fairly certain it doesn't do anything except look、so、cool. So it's just graphic, huh? <laughs> yeah, but that is what he can do.、Mm-hmm. He also has access to a mechanic called the home run.、Mm-hmm. So some certain bat attacks can home run. And when you hit a home run, where he does the suppose,、mm-hmm. and then it cleans out the bases as if you hit a home run in baseball. I see. So you get one for the home run itself and one for each runner, and the bases become clean again. Gotcha. Right. So as you increase in runs more and more,、mm-hmm. from you, you get more and more runs. Once you reach 10, the game pauses, and then he turns on this mode, which is Victory Cry, when he starts glowing golden.、Mm-hmm. And he has a lot of new things that he's available to him in this mode. But the major ones are his bat normals get access to a special property called Clean Hit. And Clean Hits let him do a lot more damage and more special combos. I see. And his life and meter continuously go up for、What? the rest of the round. As you get more and more runs at the bottom,、mm-hmm. uh, let's say 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, and 55. Uh, each of those landmarks, he regenerates faster and faster. Also,、uh, this attack, the spinning one, the tornado,、uh-huh. it does more and more damage the more runs you have as well.、Huh. So, at each of those landmarks as well, 10, 5, 10,、uh, and so on,、mm-hmm. you get more damage from the tornado attack. It, it seems pretty small at first, but it really does add up as the combos get bigger and bigger. And I guess the biggest thing is that you know, your count actually carries over, you know, over the rounds. Right, over、so. the rounds. So, you could be losing really badly the first round. And you make、like、a small comeback and get up to 10,、mm-hmm. but you'll be stalked with the golden mode at the start of the next round. So it's even a small victory for the next round as well. Jeez. <laughs> so it's actually really neat. And I, I, I personally really like baseball, but <laughs> it gives you something to work towards、mm-hmm. in addition. And then once you do get the mode on, clean hit combos are extremely stylish and they're lots of fun to do. I see.、Mm-hmm. Okay, then、um, let's, let me see what kind of like, normal attacks he does. Right, so this is his、uh, standing A.、Mm-hmm. It's a very quick check, and the hitbox is actually pretty far for what it is. I see. It actually. Farther than the graphic, yeah. Yeah. It ha- does have a bit of an anti air, so people are trying to go over you, you can tag them. Oops.、Mm. Like, oops. It, do- it hits fairly high, but. I see. Also,、um, after that is his、uh, 
It's crouching A. Mm -hmm. It's pretty standard low attack. Um, there's really nothing too special or unspecial about it in the, in the in terms of this game, but it does hit low. Mm -hmm. So it is a useful pressure tool in addition with the other A attacks. I see. His B attack is a, a kind of an underhand baseball swing. Mm -hmm. uh, like all baseball attacks, it does have it does interact with the baseball gauge at the bottom. Uh, it also is useful for hitting back projectiles. I see. So I'll go ahead and make a, a, a D attack. Okay, let's try this. Right. You can press 5B to swing this back, and it sends the fi a, a special fireball straight back at them. Uh -huh. If you're successful, mm -hmm. even if the opponent blocks, it counts as a hit regardless. Oh, so go ahead and do it see. again. It counts uh -huh. as one hit. Oh, that's cool. And then... It's a decent move. It does hit around where the graphic looks like it does. Mm -hmm. So if someone jumps at you, mm -hmm. you can use it. It's not it's not too bad. I see. But it doesn't have any invincibility ah. in far, as far as properties are concerned. Mm -hmm. So it's definitely one where you know they're going to be there, so you press the button. Gotcha. I mean, it does cover a you know, like, pretty nice area, so... That's right. It's not terribly fast, but it does have a decent hitbox. And does stay out for very a good amount of time. Mm -hmm. Next up is his Crouching B. Mm -hmm. uh, this is actually an anti-air, so it actually does have the invincibility. I see. It isn't as fast as a lot of other characters' anti-airs, but it does have a very far, far forward hitting hitbox. I see. Oh, yeah, they clash. <laughs> uh, it's not very strong against cross-ups because it doesn't hit behind itself at all. Let's see. So if someone jumps over, unless you turn around like that. Let's see, now her jump A, I think. Hits him in the head, right? Mm -hmm. Let's see, try. Mm. He managed to turn around in time, but in a case where they dash over you, uh -huh. so yeah, it's actually that move is really strong. But <laughs> yeah, either way, unless he turns around on purpose, it's mm -hmm. very difficult to hit moves that are behind him. But because you can delay it, and it does have a lot of the property invincibility, mm -hmm. you can just delay it and get a hit in like that. Like other baseball moves, it does um, it does have it does interact with the gauge the same way they all do, mm -hmm. and it kind of it can hit projectiles, but as with the motion, it hits them upwards. So go ahead and make the the persona orb. Okay, here you go. So it goes up like oh, that. I see. It does have uses. Some characters do shoot projectiles down. You can hit them straight back up. I guess if it's like like you could go throwing the fan, you know, from the air or something. Exactly. Um, you can use both of them, and it's like you can use both of them to kind of cover more space by hitting back different projectiles. I see. That's um, right. Are either of them jump cancelable? Um, five. Uh, the standing one is jump cancelable on hit only. Uh huh. The crouching one is cancelable also on block. I see. Uh -huh. that's cool. They're, they're definitely not bad attacks. As for his standing C, mm -hmm. uh, his persona appears and throws an Agi. Mm -hmm. It does have. It is fairly fast for the distance that it reaches, and the projectile is a projectile, mm -hmm. but it can be crouched under at long range. I see. It does hit closer as they're closer up. Uh, but as it gets farther, it doesn't hit anymore. Interesting. Uh, it is not a bad poking tool because it does reach farther than most people expect it to. Mm -hmm. So if people are trying to get into a certain range, you can kind of throw the fireball at them and it causes them to stop. This move is also dash cancelable. I see. So if you do hit them, you can get in. Mm -hmm. If they block, you can also be tricky with it to use them to come in with it, but it is a little risky. Because there is a bit of a delay before the dash yeah, can become yeah. cancelable. Up next is his uh, crouching C. Mm -hmm. It's a really long reaching uh, persona slide attack. And it's low block. It's a low it is a low attack. It is a really it's a really key part of his combos for more damaging combos. Mm -hmm. um, it does combo into his his other persona lunging attack. Mm -hmm. So it's a great poke for poking really far away. Because it stays off for so long. It is quite slow though, so if someone you know knows about it, can jump straight over it and come in on you. So that is a little dangerous, but I see. It's not a bad attack to poke far from really low, and like I said, it's it's definitely one of his best combo tools. He also has, in addition, um, I didn't mention this earlier, but mm -hmm. uh, standing B is also dash cancelable. Oh, yeah. It isn't back dash cancelable, only forward dash. Same with five C. Mm -hmm. And on block also. Yes, on block also. I see. It's not a bad idea to mix it in every now and then to get closer, but mm -hmm. it is a bit risky because they can hit you out of it before your dash becomes cancelable. Mm -hmm. Up next is the the D normals, which is uh, this is his standing D. Mm -hmm. The persona comes out and uh, does like a triple attack, mm -hmm. but if it misses or it does not get blocked, it does nothing else. Uh. It is not a bad tool for 
pressure. So if they block it, they're going to be forced to block two more. Mm -hmm. But there is a gap between the first, the third, and the, the second and third hit. So if they block the second hit, they can quick escape. I see. Or things like that. But it's definitely, if they, you can force them to block it, it's definitely not a bad idea to... It's definitely not bad. And also, also, because there is a gap between the second and third hit, they have to switch block to block the cross up. Ah. And lastly is this move. It causes the Persona to go straight out mm -hmm. in an upwards way. And it's not a bad anti air, but a really good usage of it is after the Persona goes out, if you do it again, it comes back from the opposite direction. I see, it keeps its position then. Right. Uh -huh. So you can also use it in combination with uh, Standing D to make mm -hmm. it come back, the other Standing D come the other way. Uh, so you can tricky. do lots of tricky things like that, <laughs> yeah. I see. It's definitely, because this move itself does a lot of damage by mm -hmm. itself, um, it also does combo into Deathbound from far away, which is his, uh, one of his special attacks. Mm -hmm. So you can use it to poke from far away, and it definitely, on the way back too, it has a lot of, you can do a lot of tricky things with it. I see. So it's definitely, a very good move. And lastly is his auto combo, mm -hmm. the, a, the A combo. The second hit uh, puts you a lot closer, and it is jump cancelable on block, so it is one of his best neutral tools. No, it is one of his best block string tools. Mm -hmm. You can do tricky things by jump cancelling and dashing over people. Mm -hmm. Stuff like that. I see. Uh, in addition to, like, in addition by having a jump cancelable 2B, mm -hmm. and in addition to the uh, second hit of the auto combo, you can definitely do a lot of tricky mix-ups with uh, different jump cancelables moves. Also, the standing is also jump cancelable on, on block as well. So you have like, he has access to decent ways to reposition by jumping, gotcha. and you can do pressure like that with instant dashes or you know jump crossover turns. So continuing. I guess well, we didn't talk much about this, but this is the third hit of his auto combo, mm -hmm. and uh, it's it's not really useful for anything except for the auto combo itself, because it does give you a lot of the bonus meter. But on block, it's really, 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 it's really, really unsafe. <laughs> um, it can be special canceled even on block, but the mm -hmm. window is really late. So, what? Yeah. <laughs> that late? Jeez. So you can't do it. You really can't do much with it most of the time. So it's better not to do it. Mm -hmm. um, it does go into auto uh, uh, auto, auto attack though, so uh -huh. going on block. Okay. It goes into all attack fairly early, so that's the one way you can kind of make it a little less unsafe. But mm. to block the all attack also, since it's the only thing you can do after, there's really not much you can yeah, do. Yeah, I guess like all I, all I have to do is just first crouch block, and then just yeah. just stand. Right. Yeah. Um, the third hit is decent as uh, when it knocks because it does knock down and does give you the bonus. It's mm. not a bad choice because you can kind of get back in uh, if you're not sure what combo you should do. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, it goes straight into uh, the tornado. And then that tornado does not knock down. Ah. So it is usually a little better to go for something else most of the time. I see. But it is there if you need it. Okay. Let's go to talk about the jump normals. Uh, mm -hmm. Jump A is very. It's part of. It's a part of the middle. As far as jump A's go, mm -hmm. it hits very. It hits a good distance in front of him. Not too high ahead of him either. So it's actually useful for you know anti air I see. or. You know, combo fodder, stuff like that. Also, forcing people to block as they tech out of the tornado, <laughs> which is also probably going to happen a lot. Uh, it's also useful for that as well. I see. Uh, jump B is actually a very strong normal. It hits very far down despite what it looks like. <laughs> so it also hits very far out. So this is his really go-to jump in, <laughs> as far as uh, you know, his general gameplay is concerned. <laughs> it's also a bat normal, so it does uh, work with the gate itself. I see. You can also reflect projectiles with it, and as the motion looks like, it shoots projectiles straight down. <laughs> gotcha. So it's definitely useful for a lot of other things, but definitely it is one of his best moves up completely. Jumping C is, um, the Persona comes out and attacks straight ahead. I see. And the attack itself is active for very long, mm -hmm. and also stops uh, Junpei's momentum. So it's actually really useful for having, forcing an opponent to run into it. So if they're trying to come in closer to them, he can just stop his momentum. And it's actually quite a useful tool. It can be done really close to the ground too. It hits very far forward for mm -hmm. an air move. So it's definitely not a bad move. It can also be cancelled. as you. It doesn't look like it can be cancelled, but it definitely can be into special moves. Mm -hmm. And also into the D attacks as well. I see. Next is, uh, he has access to the same... Uh, on the ground he has the standing and crouching dude. Mm -hmm. He can do both of these in the air as well. 
So this is what his D attacks are in the air. Because of the trajectory you can change with the jump D mm -hmm. or the two, uh, the crouching D, it goes. Uh, it's actually a lot more useful in the air compared to the ground. But it also contain. It also has the same. It also ha uh. keeps the health. It retains the position. Mm -hmm. You can use the same tricks in the air and on the ground as well. I see. So. Okay. Mm -hmm. Those those are pretty much all his normal attacks. Uh, his all out attack is fairly quick for what it is. Mm -hmm. Though he does jump in the air, he is throwable at the very end. So it can. It is possible to throw him out of this move. It's not easy. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> Don't need to dash forward? You just or have to throw right before the bat's about to hit you. Ah, I yeah. see. I see. Oh, that's hard. <laughs> it is hard, but though it looks airborne, it does become grounded, so you have you may get surprised at what he threw me, even though I jumped. Huh. But it's not easy, and it usually happens more on accident than on the uh, Yeah, like that. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> happens more on accident, but because of the way it looks, it does look like it's supposed to beat throws really cleanly. Mm. It sometimes loses to them, you know, you know, with bad luck. But it does give you access to you know, a lot of standard you know, kinds of uh, combos and you know, anti-air kind of things. I mean, not anti-air, but air combos and as well as corner combos. Uh -huh. uh, this also counts as a bat normal, so it does, it does also work with the gauge. Oh, I see. Yeah, so you can actually reflect projectiles with it as well. <laughs> Weird. Yeah, go ahead. See. It's hard though, because it's it very slow. Time, huh? Yeah, It's very, very slow. Okay. It's kind of an uh -huh. afterthought. Uh -huh. Some people have uh, furious actions that are projectiles, mm -hmm. so sometimes it hits the furious action away, and it huh. does have a. There's sometimes where it does do something useful, but it's more of an afterthought. That well, he does swing his bat, so mm -hmm. it does do it like that, and it's not it's not terrible as far as things go. Mm -hmm. And what about his furious action? His furious action. So he takes a pose, mm -hmm. and then if you press A, B, C, or D. He'll do a follow-up attack. I see. And they're, for the fierce action, they're all the same. But this is also a bat attack. And uh, it does interact with the gauge as well. So mm. it, it does give him a run. Gotcha. There's also... Um, when he goes into stance initially, mm -hmm. he's invincible. So as soon as you see the little spark around his body, yeah. that's the portion that it's invincible. Oh, so it's just for just a tiny little bit. Yes, and then once you press the button, he becomes invincible again. Oh. But if you wait for too long, someone can hit you while you're, while you're preparing. I see. Well, oops. well, I think the easiest would be like... Yeah, exactly. So it does have a good amount of invincibility when he's starting the pose. Uh -huh. But once he's started, it's better to just let it rip. Gotcha. Like most furious action, it is cancelable into supers. Mm -hmm. So you can you can do if it's blocked. You can super cancel into this other super, which is it's another invincible move. So you can be a little tricky with it mm -hmm. if someone tries to punish you a little bit too early. So it's definitely it's not bad as far as they go. Just having access to a useful super at the other end of it is definitely useful. Mm -hmm. But as the animation suggests, uh, people can jump over it. It is not terribly fast either. So, does it hit hit behind? It does not. Oh, okay. <laughs> so that's the main that's the main weaknesses of it. But it is for it, what it is. It does have a good amount of invincibility because of the pose portion, mm -hmm. and it also does you know hit them really far away if that's useful to the matchup. Mm -hmm. As for his special moves, yes. So he has um, this is uh, the tornado, which is mm -hmm. what we call it. But I believe it's uh, super super tornado batting form. I believe is what it's called. <laughs> And it's, for the most part, it is useful as combo filler, because mm -hmm. it does knock them away. It also is, it is a bat attack, so mm -hmm. it does count towards the gauge. And because it is a bat attack, oftentimes because you can end a combo with it, mm -hmm. it does give you extra runs and hits. And also can be used to combo into its super attacks. So the A1 is very fast, and is usually the one you'll use when you're not in Victory Cry. Uh -huh. But the B1 is much slower. But it hits much farther, and it's harder to tech. I see. So it actually does knock down, but it does take a. It is much slower. It's harder to combo into. The tornado motion itself does move him forward a little bit, so it can be a little bit tricky with it. Uh, on block, it is unsafe, but because of the pushback, it can be hard to punish. So it is hard to punish. Same with the B one as well. So there, there are chances to be tricky with uh, little little block strings, like uh, especially when you've already swept them. Mm -hmm. 
you can definitely do certain block strings where you end with tornado, and it's you know half safe. It's kind of something you would do once in a while. I see. It is a it is a way to end block strings where you're not sure if you you could be punished for mm -hmm. if you think your opponent will be really on point with his instant blocking. Uh, it is something you can try. Plus, you'll be like so far away. from Yeah, that exactly. Anyway. So especially some characters have very very fast SP attacks. Mm -hmm. So uh, it is one way to stay safe against them, yeah. just in case you're not sure what's gonna happen. And it is a bad move. It does give you one ball on block, so it can be one a good way to get like one extra ball if you really need one. Gotcha. This attack can also be done in the air, mm. and unlike the ground one, he moves a lot more. And it also corresponds a little bit to his momentum in the air. Ah, I see. So and uh, so the B, like the A one, it is very short in the movement, mm -hmm. but the B one, uh, it moves much farther forward. And but it still does correspond to momentum. So if I'm in the middle and I do the B one. You can kind of change how far you go. Huh. But it can be a little bit tricky as a useful like tool mm -hmm. for when they block this. Let's see. So let's say your opponent has an anti air. You can delay your fall by doing a move like this. And yeah, well, the, it won't do anything against the arrow since they go straight up. But guess, yeah. But you can do. It can also be a little bit tricky with the cross up. Uh, the attack itself, when he lands on the ground, that's when he does the final attack. Mm -hmm. So it always auto corrects. So it actually can be a little bit tricky to deal with. It's definitely not something that's very rewarding to do, but it is something you can do once in a while to make you know keep your opponent on his toes. I see. I mean, at the very least, you know, he's not swinging like with his back you know, right. toward the opponent, so he's not like like wide open. Or anything. Exactly, because <laughs> this move is so strong, mm -hmm. people are very on guard against it as it's very difficult to anti-air. Mm -hmm. But because of that, it gives you a little small opportunity to use moves like this, and they are. It's not terribly unsafe. Oh, I have a full count. <laughs> So it is something you may want to try in the air sometimes. But otherwise, it's mostly for combos, as, as we stated before. Mm -hmm. The SP1 moves even farther forward, uh, but it largely has about the same use. And it looks like it pulls uh, the opponent into him. As right. On the hit, when it hits the opponent, it sucks the opponent in as like a tornado. And then until, usually unless something really crazy happens, mm -hmm. it will pretty much always end in the last hit, which is the where he does one more swing. I see. So it's definitely useful as it's definitely a really important combo tool for him. Uh, his next move is the push bunt, mm -hmm. super push bunt, super super push bunt. <laughs> so the A one is a very short one, uh -huh. and uh, it's it's disadvantage on block, but not by a whole lot. I see. So it's a really safe way to end certain block strings, especially if uh, especially because it does push them out. Mm -hmm. but, yeah, I try to do something, but if the opponent isn't ready. It can be hard for them to really do anything about it. I see. And it's just a safe way. It also is a bad attack. So it does count towards now, the balls. How far does that go anyway? It's it goes farther than the motion, but there's kind of a little shockwave that comes out when he does the move. Uh-huh. Yeah. Huh. But it does have a it does have a, a tiny bit of auto guard. I see. So there's a really tiny window where it can block attacks. Let's see, what should I do? Is I guess mm, this could be hard. Try uh, auto attack. Okay. No, just auto uh, the AB. Oh, okay. Yeah. Ready? I'll try. I tried. <laughs> One more. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. It, that was uh, that was yours. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm. It is really, really. As you can see, it's really, really unreliable. So it's not really used for the auto guarding purpose. But like all, but like all bat moves, they reflect projectiles. So. Oh, okay. You can go yeah, ahead and do it. Right yeah. Oh, it reflects okay. them straight forward. <laughs> also, the tornado does as well. Go ahead and do the other one. Uh -huh. Yeah. So I forgot to mention that, but. The air tornado, while it looks like it could reflect a lot of projectiles, uh -huh. only reflects around the beginning and for the last hit. Oh, really? Yeah, so go ahead and do the anti air shot. So, oops. Please, Ouch. Sorry. Here. So, I did the tornado right there, but it's very hard. The air one is very hard to use to reflect projectiles. Huh. Yeah. I think it has to do with how fast the move is, mm -hmm. but it's not reliable for doing uh, something like that. I see. But it happens once in a blue moon, though, but it's really difficult. Go ahead and do it one more time. I'll do it from far away this time. Yeah. Uh, so it's because of the speed, it's difficult to use for that. For that, and also kind of hits it straight ahead, so it's a little difficult to use for that as well. Yeah. And then uh, let's back to push bunt. Mm -hmm. The B version is uh, it's much slower, mm -hmm. but it's also chargeable. It's delayable. I see. And this helps preserve the auto guard. So you uh -huh. can probably try all out attack, and I'll probably do it correctly this time. 
Uh, go ahead and try the uh, fierce action instead. Okay, let's see. There we go. Oh, I saw it. Yeah, okay. it is really hard to use, but it does have this property. Gotcha. Uh, there are characters where uh, there's a very telegraphed attack that you know it's going to come, mm -hmm. and that's when you would probably use it. So mm -hmm. while, while you could knock someone down and have this over them to block their Wake Up Furious action, mm -hmm. it is dangerous because they could just they'll do it d at a delayed timing or at a different timing, and it'll lose the auto guard mm -hmm. at, a, at a really bad positioning. But it does work if you do master the timing. And like I said, there's very telegraph attacks that you can confirm automatically and then get it for, for sure. Uh -huh. So it's useful for that if you do have it. I see. Uh, both the bunts are useful combo tools as well. Uh, the A1 in particular, it puts them, it knocks down at a short distance away from you. Mm -hmm. So it lets you continue pressure from any basic combo. Mm -hmm. It can be delayed so that they're closer to the ground. So you push them a little bit closer to you. Mm -hmm. But you can also do it at the max speed as well. It doesn't, so they're a little farther away, depending on which you prefer. The B1 isn't really useful in normal combos, mm -hmm. but it is useful when you're in Victory Cry, which we'll get to that later. Okay. The SB Bunt is like a better version of the B Bunt. It has a much longer guard point, mm -hmm. but... Oops. Yeah, uh, it has a significantly longer guard point. So if you do want to, if you want a guard point for sure, this is probably the go-to move. Um, it does cost meter, but mm -hmm. it is a useful tool as well. It's not a bad idea, if you know what's coming at least. A bunt cannot be done in there. <laughs> if you're curious. Uh, his next special move is let's see. The let's see, the hell they call it the hell slide. Okay. In colloquially, but it's like uh but basically there's two versions on the ground, which uh -huh. is where he does a one hit low immediately. It's like a trip and fall kind of slide. It's uh because it is a low and it is a special move, you can kind of slide and then to it so you could do two lows in a row. Mm -hmm. So things like that. Like but the really useful move version of this move is the D version, where he does a running and then does an overhead into a low. So because because the animation itself is a bit ambiguous with his actual run animation, it can scare opponents into thinking what's happening and then they get hit by the overhead. I see. Uh, it's probably one of the most difficult to block moves. And the second hit is again low, right? Yeah, it's again low. So he could actually do really tricky things by one more canceling the first hit. Mm -hmm. And as you're about to block low for the second hit, tag you again with oh, another overhead. I see. So that's the main, the really useful like version of this move. Um, the D version also has one hit of projectile auto guard, which huh. is incredibly difficult to use. But let's go ahead, go ahead and put the orb out. Right. So you can do that and go through it. But you did like right at the beginning. It's right at the beginning before he starts diving. Oh man. So it is really hard to use, but because you can't really do anything once you start diving, uh, it is a little bit kind of iffy on why, whether or not you should use it. But um, the SB one, on the other hand, mm -hmm. can be cancelled. Uh -huh. So it is the same as the D one in that it does a high and a low, mm -hmm. but it can also be cancelled by holding the buttons down. Uh -huh. And instead of just projectile auto guard, it auto guards anything for one hit. Oh. So go ahead and do the projectile because it makes it easier. But you can just run through it and then stop. Mm. And you can also do maybe... I guess try all out attack. I'll try to I'll right. cut it. Ready? Yeah. I tried. Yeah, uh, so like that. So it is possible. Mm. It only has one hit, so if you get hit by another attack, it'll break it. And mm -hmm. unfortunately, as you just saw, uh, it's fatal counter hit state. So Ooh. if you are in this attack at all, uh, and it gets hit by any of your opponent's attacks, it becomes a fatal counter, and they can score a really big combo on you. Uh, that's so, pretty scary. Yeah, so as good as this move is as a mix-up tool, and, you know, extraneous, you know, various things, uh -huh. uh, it is really risky for that reason. I see. It can also be done in the air, somehow. Uh, <laughs> the C1 is a much shorter fall, mm -hmm. and the D1, he kind of flies out first. I do believe the first hit's also an overhead, and then into a low. Oops, so go down block low? Yeah. It is not. They're both low, I believe. Mm. So, it's not terribly useful for that reason. But because you can run, jump, and then do this, you can kind of get away from things you wouldn't expect to get away from. Uh -huh. And the SB one actually carries your opponent to the ground. Mm -hmm. So if you're in, if you're doing an air to air mm -hmm. of some kind, go ahead and jump. You can carry them to, like if you do hit with it. Mm -hmm. But it's kind of it's extremely situational unless you're a shadow character. Mm -hmm. Um, there are the chances that you'll hit with this move are extremely small unless you're the shallow version of this character. But it does carry them back to the ground if you do want like a certain kind of knockdown. I see. But yeah, it is really difficult to use and you have to set it up a certain way to make it really work. Is there like a like one easy like all out combo 
uh, that ends with that? I don't believe there is, in uh, fact. Uh, what happens during the All Out is, depending on where you are, right, you want to maximize the bad attacks, mm -hmm. but it is possible that maybe like this, yeah, mm -hmm. but they tech before the ground. You might yeah. be able to set up so the second hit carries them down too, but it's not something you see very much due to the, due to the way that you want to use the All Out attack, but it is possible. Mm, the other special movie has is Deathbound, which is uh, he summons, he does like a pose, and the persona falls at a certain place on the screen and does huge damage. Mm -hmm. It's a really useful zoning tool, mm -hmm. and it can also be done in the air. So you can do it's you can kind of control space on the screen by forcing your opponent to block his attack. And since it's an overhead, it does tag people occasionally if they're not prepared to deal with it, uh, because on block. It's mm -hmm. not if you do block it. There's so much block stun that you can't really do anything about what Junpei does. Mm -hmm. But it, there is a bit before it comes out. Junpei does have to pose, and once again, when you do block it, you can erase one of Junpei's Persona cards. Yeah. So you can't do this forever, even if it is useful. The C1 falls a little distance ahead of him, mm -hmm. but the peculiar thing about it is it's always relative to where he was facing. Huh. You can dash the other way and do the C1; it'll still fall in right in front of you. <laughs> Interesting. Whereas the D1. Uh, it always falls like a, the, the longer distance, but if you change, if you change which side you're facing, it will go come out the other way instead. Mm. So it's kind of peculiar, but um, it just takes some getting used to. <laughs> I see. But like I said, because they're so different, uh, mm -hmm. they're really useful because it keeps your opponent on their guard. If you combine this with uh, 2D, 5D, and Deathbound together, you actually have a pretty good way to cover a lot of space on the screen with just a lot of persona attacks. I see. Uh, SB Deathbound appears wherever the opponent is. So it can be close, far. Uh, you know, if you jump over them, it still comes out. For the most part, it can be used to tag someone doing anything anywhere. So let's say Yukari does jump the jumping arrow down shots. You could just have you can uh, the, the spiral arrow. You can tag her by doing that pretty much anywhere on screen. It's very useful if you you know have the timing for it, and it does do a big chunk of damage. Both the death bounds can be comboed into this super. Oh, that's so you can cool. Get, yeah, so you can get a little extra damage just on a single hit. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, it's really a useful tool, especially combined with his other like uh, full screen tools. Let's see. Mm -hmm. Similar to the health slide, mm -hmm. it is a fatal recovery move. So if you do get hit during it at all, it is fatal counter no matter what it is. Ah. Do I try the air one? I don't believe that. Yeah, the air one, however, is just a regular counter hit. So, it's the ground one that's the riskiest one. But either way, like I said, combined with all the different kinds of uh, full screen attacks you have, mm -hmm. he has access to a lot of different you know, ways to cover vectors on the screen, in including with Deathbound. Like, Deathbound by itself wouldn't be a big deal because all you have are two pillars, mm -hmm. but when you combine it with this move, like, and it can also come back from the other side, so you get access to a lot of different like ways to make the opponent think about what you're going to do full screen. Now onto his supers. I do believe that's all of his special moves. I think so. Right. So his supers. Uh, the first one is the the home run. Mm -hmm. The uh, I believe it's called the predicted home run or something along those lines. Uh, by doing this special first, he goes into his stance, mm -hmm. and then by pressing a, a different button, he does a certain follow up. I see. So the A and C follow up, when they hit the opponent directly in the middle of their hitbox, mm -hmm. it causes a home run, which you mentioned before. Uh, Gives you access to you know extra runs because you'll get the run for the hit itself, and then the the one one for all the bases as well. I see. The other follow up it causes a clean hit, which causes the opponent to skid for a while. So there are situations where uh, you can combo both of the supers together using this clean hit. <laughs> so like that, uh -huh. and then you can get both of them. And then that's the the B and D follow up gives you the clean hit. Uh, the Super itself has two versions, mm -hmm. so the A version is faster, and the B version is slower. The stance itself is slower, but so let's, uh, this is the A version into the A follow-up, that's 1950. Mm -hmm. The B version to the B follow-up, uh, sorry, P version into the A follow-up is uh, 2250. So it does more damage, but it is slower. Uh, the same goes for the clean hit versions, mm -hmm. 1300, and then the other one should be 1500. So, it's kind of up to whatever combo you're doing. So it does connect from something, at least, even though it's slow. I, on clean hit, yes. So, well, there are, there are special, specific combos that can go into it. Mm -hmm. It's uh, a little bit confusing because Junpei has so many different combo tools. 
But uh, there are ways to use it. And the move itself, the pose, also like his furious action, mm -hmm. the pose itself has invincibility as well. Oh. And then the swing itself also has a good amount of invincibility as well too. So let's say go ahead and block. Okay. Like, but once Let's once you get past a certain point, it loses the invincibility as well. But it does have a lot of it. Mm. The weakness of this move, like once he does swing, it becomes fully invincible again. Mm -hmm. The main weakness of this move is quick escape. So you can, if you see this move, you just quick escape and go behind me. There's nothing okay. I can do about this. And moving on to the other super, which is the this he summons his persona out a certain distance ahead of him, mm -hmm. and then the persona throws a fireball at you. And then you can hit the fireball back. You can also hit the opponent if the opponent is being carried by the fireball. Or you can hit you can just hit the opponent straight off anyway. But basically you press a button similar to the other super to do a certain follow-up. And similar to the other super, A and C cause home runs. Mm -hmm. While B and D cause clean hits. And they have the same properties, so I believe it's like this. Nope. Mm. Uh, I missed it, but. As, as I'm about to mention, um, if you do not hit the opponent at the correct spot with the hit, uh -huh. it doesn't cause a home run or a clean hit, oh, no matter neither. what you do. So it just counts as a regular attack. Mm -hmm. So that can be... So in combos, you always want to do it, but if you're using it as a reversal, it can kind of be iffy as to what is going to happen. Mm -hmm. But the hit property is always similar to what it should look like. So for example, the normal hit, mm -hmm. If you use the A follow up, it hits them as if you're trying to hit a home run. Mm -hmm. And then the B one, if you don't clean it, it hits them as if you're trying to clean hit them. Yeah, but the, tra tra the trajectory is a little bit different. The home run goes like a little higher yeah. up. Yes. So they, you know, they do exist if they, you know, it, that is something that can happen when you're going for a certain kind of reversals. Um, because this, these moves are rapid cancelable, or not rapid, one more cancelable on, um, on block. Mm -hmm. It can be more reliable if you know your opponent's going to block your reversal. And you know, it does have a lot of invincibility, so. That can be an alternative to the Furious Action straight on. Especially because you can't, you can only cancel into Super from Furious Action. Mm -hmm. But you can one more cancel this one. So there are situations where you want to do this instead. Gotcha. The last Super, his Awakening Super, is uh, this Super, where he sends the Persona straight out, and then the Persona brings them back for another hit. Hmm. The C1 is slow. Mm -hmm. The D1 is faster. But the speed that which it brings them, and the SP1 is super fast. But the speed that which they bring them back corresponds to how fast the initial move is too. Yeah. And like the other moves, you can hit a home run with this, and it does significantly more damage. Mm. So this one did that one did 28. Let's see if I what happens if I miss the timing. 14. 14. Whoa. Literally half. Ugh. Mm -hmm. Four. And there's a lot of there's actually more there's actually kind of hidden timings for them too. But it is an extremely damaging super when you can get the home run. I haven't been to the batting cages in a while, so... <laughs> this, this one does an absurd amount of damage if you can get the clean hit. Mm -hmm. But it does really piddling damage if you miss it. Ready to go. So 35 raw. And I believe you can actually do more. It, it does more when you have the... There's two timings for this clean hit. I believe it is exactly two frames. Mm -hmm. Two and frames. Yeah. There's one of the frames does a little bit more damage than the other one, I from see. what I recall. Now, what's that first part? Um, it's it's not a grab, right? You can block it? You can block it. Um, during this pose where he's on fire, he has super armor mm -hmm. throughout the entire thing. Oh, okay. You can go ahead and uh, do the spiral arrow. Okay. Yeah. I see. But because it has super armor, you can one more cancel. Uh, yeah, so go ahead. Okay. One more, yeah, you one more cancel it. The, the spiral arrow. Okay, Whoops. Go ahead. Whoops. I'll do it one of these days. <laughs> yeah, you could block after one more canceling. <laughs> yeah. So it's not that useful even though it does go full screen. Mm -hmm. If the opponent does have the awareness, they can one more cancel. I see. But it is definitely not a bad move. Um, it is... The, the SP1 is freakishly fast, so mm -hmm. it can be used as a full screen uh, punish. Uh, like the other moves, as you see, like because if you because all these supers have a specific follow up, mm -hmm. it's possible to miss completely. Huh? And then oh, I see. because of this, you can be you can be in a lot of you'll be in a lot of trouble if you miss them because you whiff completely, mm -hmm. as if you just missed the super, and you can get punished really badly for missing them. 
So take take care to you know, take care to bat, uh, going to batting practice all the time. <laughs> yeah, the most embarrassing thing is missing this one for sure. They bounce yeah. off the wall and come straight back to you, so it's actually oh. really dangerous. Mm -hmm. So definitely want to swing earlier than later. But it is you know it's a reliable way to do a lot of damage you can get there. Um, let's see. That's about it for his supers. I did mention the SB versions for the other ones. Mm -hmm. um, the SB1 is a more powerful version of the super. It has the same properties. Uh -huh. And with the follow-ups as well. Uh, the other super is... Because the Persona appears a set distance away, mm -hmm. uh, the D and C1 are both set distance, but the SB1 is anywhere on screen. So it always appears behind, directly behind them no matter where they are. I see. It can also, it also, was a, as you saw earlier, if they're farther away, the Persona just throws it from where he's standing. Mm -hmm. So he could do something like this, maybe? Yeah, he's a little bit farther away. <laughs> so there's definitely options that you can use with the super. Yeah, there he goes. Um, as I just did right there, I hit a projectile back. Mm -hmm. These supers, as, as you can probably have guessed, are all bat moves as well. So you can hit projectiles back with them, but instead of the normal projectile, hits a really powerful version back. So go ahead and do a, go ahead and do a Persona move. Okay. That one hits the uh, item straight up. The A fall up and C fall up go straight up, and the B fall ups go straight forward. Gotcha. Unlike the the ground one, it does a lot more damage. Mm -hmm. Maybe about yeah, double. So 1600, which is the normal one's about 700, 800. So yeah, it's exactly double. <laughs> and yeah, it can be useful to punish certain things. Like Yukari Spiral Arrow is has a lot of recovery when you do the move. Mm -hmm. So uh, if you do see it and say, oh, this can kill, you can go ahead and bat it back like that. Yeah. If I, hit, if I hit it the correct direction. Like that. Uh, and because it's just one hit of big damage, it can be really useful to close out certain games and things like that. I see. And lastly is his IK. His IK is actually one of the better ones in this game. Uh, he crouches down and then Trismegistix comes out and grabs you. Um, because he's crouching during the initial animation, mm -hmm. it actually can be useful for that even after it whiffs completely. And there are chances for where it's a completely bad move, but the opponent fails to punish because they've never seen it before. <laughs> uh, it does go full screen relatively quickly, mm. so com like similar to Yukiko and Mitsuru and uh -huh. characters like that, it is useful to punish things. I see. So for example, Yukari's uh, B Spiral Earl mm -hmm. has a lot of startup, so if you do it even on reaction, you can actually hit her before she does anything else. Yeah. I see. Because uh, some characters, they rely on their attacks with lots of recovery to... Um, you know, to cancel to something else that's really useful. For example, Yukari can do Beast Spar Arrow and it super cancel into her Awakening Super. Uh -huh. But uh, you can kind of trump that by becoming fully invincible and instant killing them with the instant kill. <laughs> so, I mean, there are opportunities to use it. Uh, Mitsuru's 5C, the, the whipping attack, uh -huh. is also another opportunity to use it. So there actually are places where you can punish certain moves with it. Mm. It's actually not bad as far as most of the instant kills go. So, that's the basic stuff. Now let's go. To, I'll go ahead and talk a little bit about his gameplay flow, okay? Because uh, he's very different from most characters. Mm -hmm. So when you start at the beginning of the round with no runs, mm -hmm. as a character, he's actually not very strong. Uh, mm -hmm. He does not do a lot of damage. Like maybe twelve hundred. Yeah. So the main purpose, the main focus, at the beginning is to get at least ten runs. Mm -hmm. Once you get ten runs, that's pretty much where the game starts. Even with the super, his damage is very small, only about two thousand. This is auto combo. Mm -hmm. It's all very piddling damage, but the main idea is you want to hit them with as many bat moves as you can mm -hmm. while avoiding getting too many outs mm -hmm. because they reset the base runners. Yeah. And then by doing that, you can get 10 runs and then turn on the mode, which is where the real offense starts and the real defense starts as well. So basically, you just want to go through, like, uh, you want to do really, really as, as safe as possible as far as the pressure can go mm -hmm. because you don't want to get out. If you throw the opponent, mm -hmm. And they tech the throw, it counts as an out. What? Yeah. So go ahead and go ahead and tech this. Oh, oh sorry. Okay. All right, I'll, I'll do A and then throw. So it counts as an out. Huh. Yeah. So you can't even throw very much either. If the opponent throws you and you break it, it mm -hmm. also counts as an out. Oh. Um. So you have to be you have to be very very on point with your with the way you, you do your offense. And then there's. So once you like, once you get closer and closer to the ten runs, mm -hmm. you start to put pressure on the opponent because the opponent knows that you can home hit home runs as well. Yeah. 
So three at three, it's not a really big deal. But once you hit six, mm -hmm. even if you have no brunners on base, go ahead and three out me. Okay. Yeah. Just go ahead and hit me three times. Okay. One, two, three. Oh. Okay. So even with no runners on base, at six runs, you can always hit a home run and get up to ten. And that's kind of where you put the opponent at risk. I see. And once you turn it on, you get access to basically a whole lot of other new stuff, like we mentioned before. His life does regenerate indefinitely, mm -hmm. uh, as long as he's not being hit. But uh, his SP also recovers uh -huh. at a fairly decent rate. So he gets more life, like he also because he can go into Awakening, he keeps the defense boost, but he also regenerates a steady amount of health as well. As we mentioned, uh, once you start gaining health and gaining SP, mm -hmm. you can pressure opponents just by zoning them, uh, by running away from them. It causes them to be antsy and they you know, may make a bad approach, that's where your anti-air comes in, things like that. Uh, so that's one of his one of his really good tactics, and he does a lot of damage in this mode compared to what he used to do. So First the auto combo, well, it used to not knock down by itself, mm -hmm. but because it causes this clean hit now, it always causes a knockdown. I see. Now, now I mentioned clean hit, and this is the main reason he does so much damage. His attacks can now they now have different properties. Mm -hmm. So if they, you hit with the attack at a certain spacing and timing, it causes what's called a clean hit. And there's generally more hit stun, mm -hmm. there's generally more float time, and there's also all the special attacks that are not cancelable normally become special cancelable. Huh. So right here I'm doing clean hit bunt, and then I cancel straight into hell slide, wow. which gives me a knockdown. And then so you could do certain fancy things like... This is the 2C into B bunt, mm -hmm. and then this also becomes special cancelable, so... You can cancel into the SB run and then do things like that as well to corner mm -hmm. carry them. He also has uh, his jump Bs and normal B attacks become extremely. They have a lot of hit stun and block stun, and it lets you do a lot of uh, really long extended cool looking combos. Yeah, that's pretty crazy. <laughs> Yeah, you can do a lot of really, like, it's, the only difficult thing is, is that, as you see, I'm like, totally not landing it. Uh, because, um, because it's really, really dependent on where you hit the opponent with the bat and what kind of time you hit them with, uh -huh. it's very difficult on a lot of different characters. Mm -hmm. And it, what I call his combo potential is top class in this mode. Uh, it is very, very difficult as far as a lot of things go. And it is recommended that you stay with relatively easy things when you start. I see. So a lot of these are character specific then? Or? They can be, yes. Um, especially certain characters like Sho uh -huh. you know, make it very difficult to combo on. But uh, it is something that is very satisfying to land and you know it's definitely one of the, the best things about this character. Mm -hmm. Especially since it takes so much work to get 10 runs to begin with. <laughs> but if you miss the clean hit, it just becomes a normal hit as we saw right there. Mm -hmm. You can kind of fix that by confirming and being like, oh no, I missed it. And then just using like a normal tornado. The tornado will always connect anyway, <laughs> so you can fix combos like that. I see. You can also, but it like because the but even then, even though this combo potential is so high, as you notice, it pushes the opponent really far to the corner. Mm -hmm. And then once they're in the corner, he can do a really really high amount of damage. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is like one of his regular confirms. Mm -hmm. Keeps going. That's right. Wow. And he can do lots and lots of damage from this. And of course, all the time when you're recovering health, right? Yes, that's exactly Jeez. right. So he can do a lot of really interesting stuff with this. Um, especially in the corner, even from throw starters. Mm -hmm. Like, his combo potential is really unrivaled. And he can do a lot of things that most characters cannot do at all. Uh, because of that, he's also building more and more runs as he does this. So mm -hmm. he can actually regenerate more and more health as you keep getting more and more runs. Um, he also has the ability to end combos with uh, the 5D. Did I miss that? I totally did. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to clean hit the tornado. There we go. There we don't go. But basically, because it's cancelable, you can end combos in also this attack for Okazena. Mm. Let's try Let's try really hard this time. Let's just do a basic one. And at the end of like that, they're going to be forced to block this. Mm -hmm. 
So he has access to a lot of good things once he corners them as well. And because he does a good amount of damage, he's very scary once he corners them. And he does carry really far, so all you really want to do is get into this mode as fast as you can. Gotcha. So when he starts off. But once you do get into it, it's extremely rewarding. He does he has very, very satisfying combos that do lots and lots of damage. Mm -hmm. And you know, he's definitely one of my favorite characters, especially the combo hit sounds. Is so satisfying. But when you miss it though, it's very disheartening. <laughs> but that's the kind of I think it really is he's very stylish character despite, you know, what people are used to, I would say. <laughs> but he definitely has a lot of really neat stuff. He also has like ways to like when the opponent, even he's in the corner, he can switch sides very easily. Uh, yeah. So he has access to a lot of really nice stuff. I see. Now, um, in general, mm -hmm. um, do you consider Junpei as basically like all rounder? It, it seems like he's got like you know tons of different tools. Mm -hmm. He's probably like a mid range all rounder almost. Um, he kind of has a lot of long range tools, mm -hmm. but he's kind of missing the range where. Just outside of where his farthest normal will hit, uh -huh. uh, a lot of other characters really excel at that range. Mm -hmm. So, for example, Narukami and Sho, they give him a lot of trouble because at the same range, they're a little bit faster than him. But he has better like aerial stuff, like air to ground stuff kind of things, mm -hmm. and a little bit more utility with the uh, way he can run around. Mm -hmm. But in terms of that, it's very tricky to use compared to a more simple character like those two characters. But if applied correctly, he can. He does have a lot of you know tricky things he can do, mm -hmm. and he does have a big tool set compared to a lot of other characters. Mm. So there's really a lot to learn with him, mm -hmm. and I do think that he's difficult to learn as a beginner because it's difficult to find out. Well, not only are the combos difficult, but he does have to think about. Um, you know, he has to look at his own baseball cage, yeah. which is definitely like really hard to think about at first. But once you really get used to it and start look like start thinking about the game in terms of the baseball cage, mm -hmm. you'll actually it'll actually be a lot easier to learn as well because mm -hmm. you just be like, oh, I just have to do, I can only do these things, so I might as well do them. I see. Right. I also totally remembered something that I completely forgot, which is <laughs> he has a dive kick, which is this move. Oh, <laughs> I completely forgot. That's interesting. Um. So there are a couple dive kicks in this game, and his is interesting and in it blows them away on hit. Weird. In the corner, it's actually really useful to combo off of, and you can use it like a standard throw bait. So you walk up to them, they think you're gonna throw them, you dive kick them. Uh, at a certain range, go ahead and block high. You can block high. It hits low. What? Yeah. Oh, it's hitting the, yeah, it's the hitting, feet. If you hit the feet, it is a low. So a standard way to do this is to use 2B, jump cancel, and then go for low. Mm. Interesting. Yeah. yeah Sorry, I forgot like, about like, that. Kind of like messes with your mind because, oh, he's in the air. Okay, yeah. high block. But it it is really rewarding to get this hit. Yeah. Oops. Yeah, this move can also be in here for some reason. <laughs> it does knock down, but... That's the general gameplay flow of him, I would say. Gotcha. So Shadow Junpei is... A, he's very similar to normal Junpei in mm -hmm. that his main goal, once again, is to get 10 runs and then turn on the mode. Uh -huh. But unlike normal Junpei, because uh, it's a little bit more difficult for him to spend meter at 50 meter, mm -hmm. whereas Junpei could spend meter at 50 meter to get a home run, mm -hmm. it's a little bit more expensive for Shadow Junpei because his meter is more valuable when it gets to 100, mm -hmm. as he can Shadow Berserk instead. Uh -huh. But in response to that, if you're losing really badly, but you manage to get 100 meter, mm -hmm. you can almost always Shadow Berserk to get a ton of runs. I see. Something like that. <laughs> Sorry. But basically, because he has the Shadow Berserk, mm -hmm. he has a lot of opportunities to score a ton of runs, whereas a normal Junpei would probably max out maybe at 6 or 7. Uh, Shadow Junpei can go all the way to 10 in one opening. <laughs> So he's really useful to make certain kinds of comebacks, mm -hmm. uh, especially if you're losing. Uh, in certain matchups where the opponent is very oppressive in neutral and it's harder to get in, mm -hmm. you can block a lot, build a lot of meter, and then when you get that one opening, get all the way to 10 rounds, which is really effective for him. But compared to normal Junpei, he's not very different, aside from that. Um, it's just a difference of style, whether or not you want to play a little bit, like you want to get that big opening once mm -hmm. by playing a little bit safer at first and having uh, less less opportunities in the middle because you don't have the meter available or do you want to just stay a little bit more solid with the regular Junpei. Um, one of the main weaknesses of Shadow Junpei by comparison 
uh, while he does have that really nice opening, and technically he could spend meter normally as well, uh -huh. he doesn't have awakening, right? Mm -hmm. uh, when you're regenerating health and awakening, you're regenerating a lot more health. Mm -hmm. And because he doesn't have access to that, it's definitely a little bit weak. But on the flip side, because this meter is so much better at 100, yeah. uh, he's because he's regenerating meter constantly, that's the flip side to it. So he also has much more deadly as well. So it's just really a style choice on which character you think is better. Uh, there are some characters where um, it's less of a style choice and more of a firepower choice, but uh -huh. for this Junpei in particular, uh, it's really more about how you want to approach you know, getting all your runs. I see. And how you want to spend your meter later. Alright, thank you very much. Yeah.